where he rescues the imprisoned representatives of the galaxies. They warn the universe of the Daleks' monstrous ambitions, and the Daleks exterminate Mavic Chen. The Doctor manages to activate the Time Destructor, and the Dalek force is wiped out, as Sarah ages rapidly and dies. As the Doctor resumes his travels, the vegetation of Kemble has been reduced to dust. I remember being extremely busy, um, dashing around, filming at Ealing and so on. And I remember the director, Douglas Canfield, and who ran the whole thing like a military operation. And, um, for instance, I remember one afternoon in the studio, he said, uh, it's 22 and a half minutes past three, so we should be on shot 52. And, uh, and he used to call me Major. He said, uh, that would be your rank if this was a military operation. And he was Colonel Canfield. The, the thing I do remember was the filming uh, at Ealing with all the uh, model spaceships, which apparently they've still managed to get a bit of the film. That was quite a large model. That was, must have been about uh, 30 foot square, built up on Rostra. It was quite big. Two cinema films involving the Daleks were made in the 60s, Doctor Who and the Daleks, and The Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD. Everyone was rushing around corridors at Threshold House, um, saying, oh, there's going to be Dalek films, there's going to make Dalek soap and Dalek tea towels. You know, everyone had visions of um, lots of money. Um, I was quite friendly then with Terry Nation, and uh, we appeared on a very famous show on BBC Two called Late Night Lineup. And I remember asking him after the show, um, you know, what about the films, Terry? And he said, well, leave it to me, you know. And I never saw him again. Twenty years later, the Daleks were still making news when an enthusiastic Dalek was given an award on the Noel Edmonds show for overacting. Here, from an outtake from the Five Doctors story, is the reason why. The Doctor must be destroyed! Exterminate! 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 What actually happened, the director called down to me, and I was, in this particular time, happened to be sitting behind the flat on the set and said, we'd like a, what they call a wild track. They'd like a wild track of Dalek -like noise with him getting rather emotional and excited, shouting exterminate and going a little bit bananas. And they also had a, a Dalek, wanted a Dalek to move around in camera so they could take this and edit into one of the programs. So uh, I started to do this. Um, I was on cams, I could hear the box, the director upstairs, and I heard he answered the phone, but I was in the middle of doing this, so I had to carry on because the cam was running and sound was running. And he was on the phone for the best part of a minute, and the Dalek was getting higher and higher and higher until I didn't know where else to go. And suddenly the phone, he, he came down to me on my cams and said, I'm terribly sorry, Roy, and so I said, thank you and for an encore. <laughs> so this is how that happened. The creature inside um, was a mutation. There had been this uh, a war, nuclear war, between the Thals and the Dals. And um, whereas the Thals had survived, um, the, the Dals had mutated into something horrible. And we, we Verity Lambert, the producer, and, and the director, Chris Barry, we sat down and we said, well, they, they logically, over the years, developed artificial limbs and so on. So gradually they, they ended up with a, an entire machine uh, surrounding them. They were just a sort of brainy blob that, that, that lived in, in the center of this, this uh, machine. Editorially, it was decided that the thing would never be shown. Although I was asked by a magazine, Titbits, if um, I could sort of illustrate it, which I did. After the Dalek master plan completed transmission on the 29th of January 66, William Hartnell appeared in eight more stories before his regeneration into Patrick Troughton. And who else but the Daleks were chosen to launch the new Doctor in his first adventure? This six-part story sadly no longer exists. 
The power of the Daleks and the evil of the Daleks, less than six months later, were written by the original script editor of Doctor Who, David Whittaker. Evil was a seven-part adventure, and only episode two remains. The Doctor's TARDIS has been stolen, and his investigations lead him to an antique shop specializing in Victoriana. Needless to say, lurking at the back of the shop is, well, just guess.